stand as you're able. As we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not robbed you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The Lord, your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, 
and therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn, this homecoming Sunday, is number 779, Amazing Grace.
cannot rely on our own abilities. Grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the third chapter of Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, and sat down east of the city, and made a bed for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, Yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left, and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsively Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. There is no end to your greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and all your marvelous works. And shall tell of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will recount your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing joyfully of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Our second reading comes from the first chapter of Philippians. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side, with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege of not only believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able as we continue with the gospel acclamation. 
found on page 205 in the front of your head. <laughs> After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon, and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, well, Why are you standing here idle all day? They say to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the land owner, saying, This last worker only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I have not doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. I am not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me. Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise the name of Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come to you today to celebrate the homecoming. Homecoming of amazing grace in the church in this town. Thank you for the blessings you are bestowed upon these congregations, people, families, children, young people, elderly, to the Jews that you have brought them to life. Now that we reflect on your gospel and your word, open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to you. We listen when you speak. Help us, God, to make sense of our lives, to continue worshiping, proclaiming the good news of your love in Jesus Christ. Bless people, our families, community, and the world in which we live, which all belongs to you. Thank you for being faithful and gracious to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to start by saying congratulations in your homecoming celebrations. It is an honor to be invited to worship and share God's word with you all in this event. Homecomings in our culture are joyful celebrations to share memories, traditions, and look into the future. As you already know, my name is Alfredo Oviedo, and I bring greetings in the name of the Office of the Bishop. Bishop Tim Smith and senior staff also. I bring gratitude to you for your prayers, 
for your dedication, for your service, and your mission support to our CMAT. Thank you very much. You might be wondering how a person like me is serving God and congregations in the ELCA. So this sermon is not about me. Some background maybe helped you to put my words in context and make sense of the perspective I bring to our expressions of the Jewish as an ELCA roster leader or roster minister. Yes, I am a few generation immigrant from Mexico who came to the USA after um, some um, uh, pretty similar, I attended a technical school after a high school in Mexico. And we came to pursue seminary education in 1989. We came to Texas, spent four years in Texas, half a year in Chicago, then came to Hendersonville in 1992. My wife, Alexandra, wife of 48 years. Thank you. 48 years, oh my goodness. <laughs> and four children that uh, God gave us. And, uh, so everybody, just all of us came. Um, we came with uh, student visas in uh, 1989 uh, in Texas. Uh, after um, God allowed us to uh, do studies at um, the seminary, um, UNG Asheville, mm -hmm. and finally um, to pursue our dream, which we came from the beginning uh, to get a graduate doctoral studies. And, uh, I thought it was going to take us about 15 years to complete that when we came because we have to learn English. Even though we studied English in Mexico, it's not the same as trying to speak and understand in English. But anyhow, um, it took to us um, more than 30 years to complete. And finally, United Lutheran <laughs> Seminary last year, I completed my doctoral studies in Europe, United Lutheran Seminary in Philadelphia in uh, Gettysburg. Uh, I, I would like to um, always, you know, um, say uh, thank you to God and the faithfulness of the Lutheran Church who have accompanied us through all of this journey in the last 18 years of our lives. Um, the uh, program I did, um, the major project to write, uh, to complete studies at the U United Lutheran Seminary um, was a work on, it was titled um, An ELCA Local Congregation Journey to our Ethnic Integration which basically reflect 18 years, 18 years of ministry as an associate pastor at Grace Lutheran Church in Hendersonville. And if you have a chance sometime to sneak into the uh, streaming service in YouTube, you will see that it is uh, it's becoming a fully multicultural integrated church with bilingual services um, in, in every Sunday. So that's the how we are coming from. Now, enough for me. <laughs> Let us go to the gospel reading. Uh, I like to use titles for my sermons. I think that help me and you, the audience, to connect what is trying to be communicated. Uh, short titles are better, of course. Most of the time, I use exact words from the text of the lectionary. From today's title, today's reading the gospel, I have chosen the title, The Burden of the Day and Scratching It. Comes from the gospel reading, of course, in Matthew. I will repeat the title. The burden of the day and the scratching heat. Not in the feel of old COVID that congregations and us feel like that. <laughs> like we have endured pretty much like that. But our life is probably uh, much more extended than we experience, you know, with um, all the joys and celebrations and beautiful things that God has given us. Sometimes we just uh, feel the burden of the day and the scratching the heat. And I think today is a homecoming. It would be good, you know, to remember that God is faithful, that God has, you know, been through the life of your congregation. And I have to say that I try to find a great <coughs> history of your congregation <laughs> with not too much success. <laughs> Usually congregations include a short history in their websites. I try historical archives in your county and your community, even though Granite Falls has documented your community history very well and still, I couldn't find many references to Amazing Grace Lutheran Church. Um, so, could I could make reference in this sermon? Finally, it was our bishop, uh, Timothy Smith, who, from the top of his mind, shared that you were born of the merging of St. Paul's and St. Matthew's Lutheran congregations in two different counties, Catawba and Caldwell. 
<laughs> then your history became richer and much more documented. <laughs> then a uh, history of the Lutheran Church in North Carolina online, which it is one of the texts that we uh, make reference to, uh, documents that uh, St. Paul's and Catawba County was organized in 1771 by Christians of Lutheran and German Reform heritage. Later, become affiliated to the American Lutheran Church. And St. Matthew's Church, quote, I'm just quoting from this book, St. Matthew's Church is located five miles east of Grand Falls in Cobweb County. It was organized September 18, 1911, at the home of Catherine and Barbara Clay, near the present uh, church location, with 15 members and the Reverend A. L. Boliek. It is written that way. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. and Mr. Um, D. M. Henkel uh, gave a deed for the church at uh, the lot of that time. So you are have a richer history, the merging of a Dutch reform in Lutheran congregations and became an American Lutheran church and then, you know, through the years. And it's interesting, it's very intricate, the history, very, you know, which it is that. So, but your rich heritage is here. And still, I read the demographic of your county that is still 80% of the population of Grand Falls uh, still claim their German heritage. It's the largest. And they still claim uh, the some of you probably from Irish heritage <laughs> that it is kind you know, so it is kind of a rich history you know that celebrating homecoming is very is very interesting very important but you became you know in 2008 2008 about 35 years ago amazing grace Lutheran Church with the merging of St Paul's and St Matthew's and now you are a congregation that keeps continuing proclaiming the good news of the love of God in this community. But you have on the ground 252 years of history of God's faithfulness. Isn't that great to celebrate? And you can share the stories and memories of all of that today and any time you want to. And I encourage you, you know, you would also have a sense of history to grant your history and put it in your website. So a person like me looking for who are you would be wandering all over the internet trying to find it. <laughs> you know, but it is in, it is very interesting to 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 dig where do we are coming from because we how have we have become who we are. So congratulations in your in your homecoming day. Now um, I'm sure you know the your history who you are, that you have traditions you treasure and live by that you continue trusting God for your present and your future. Even though trends and expectations for churches, post COVID in a polarized society, seem to be sad and pessimistic and make us all feel sometimes hopeless. Let me bring good news from the gospel. I think congregations like yours have already endured the burden of the day and the scorching heat and is still alive and worshiping. You have a purpose and a mission to continue proclaiming this wonderful, amazing grace that God offers to all of us. News of the love of God in Jesus Christ for all people as you state in your mission, quote, our mission is to grow in faith by seeking the will of God and sharing his love with all people. And I watched last week's video and did your and ceremony and I, I know that you repeat this in your services, which is great. Keep doing that, please. <laughs> it, is, it is very amazing that you do that. Well, and you list in your website five core values. I like the one on innovation. It's new. I have never seen an innovation value in a congregation. So it is amazing. It is great that uh, I quote, we, we value opportunities to create new approaches with a willingness to experiment and explore the upward call of God in new ways with an openness to trial and error for the sake of freshness and renewal. That's amazing that you say that and it's valuable, <laughs> you know, because nobody likes to experiment, you know, <laughs> nobody likes to trial and error, you know, you are very kind of a rationalistic, scientific minded oriented. It's not, it's not, it's not kind of a, uh, you know, far from 
the reality that according to the demographics of this county, about 48% has college degrees and 11% master's degrees and above. You are a very good educated <laughs> community and a congregation, which it is it's great for who you are. So this innovation, you know, uh, value that you embrace and it is kind of uh, unique, you know, keep it, you know, to it, to it. Keep experimenting in that. Our experiment in Great Southern Church Church was that 18 years ago, and it's very good. Great Southern Church, a hundred year old congregation that never, you know, had a member who came from a different ethnicity than of German and British heritage, you know? And then they were open to experiment, <laughs> to trial and error, and to open their doors to people like me and like many others today that are part of that congregation from many different cultures and ethnicities, and enriches the life of the church. Welcoming and opening, because it's what God's, you know, always heart, you know, to welcome people even those who are different to us and that sometimes we wonder if they belong here. Uh, you say you value innovation, that you value openness and experimenting. Uh, trust God and continue honoring your value. The parable of the workers in today's gospel seems to be a Jesus response to Peter's questions in chapter 19. I quote, Peter answered Jesus, we have left everything to follow you. What then will there be for us? End of quote. Another possible interpretation that you might hear in a sermon or Bible study of this parable of the laborers or workers was aimed to the Jewish religious establishment leaders, scribes, Pharisees, and other leaders, based on Israel's self-identification as God's vineyard. You can read a song of the vineyard in Isaiah chapter 5. In either case, it's a point of reference to the last and the first. The reading on Jonah, the prophet, illustrates that what I call the Jonah syndrome, an attitude and tendency to own God, to try to make God our exclusive possession, or to claim a preference VIP treatment of God's people to the extreme to in that in indict God for having compassion and being generous to somebody we don't like. Jonah, the prophet, may be for a good reason despised, even hated the Assyrians, who were not kind but cruel rulers. So he went to preach, so to speak, rain, not carrying an umbrella. Jonah proclaiming God's compassion and forgiveness, even if people from Nineveh repented, but he didn't, he really didn't want it to, he didn't expect, he didn't believe Nineveh people was going to repent. And if they did it, Jonah didn't want God to forgive them. Of course, God surprised Jonah. The parable of the workers makes the point that God is generous, kind. Yes, to those who have endured the burden of the day and the scorching heat, but equally generous to those who just have come to the vineyard. In my interpretation, this parable speaks to us of generational transitions, in which both those who have been called to God's vineyard to work first, to endure the burdens of the day and the heat, scorching heat, scorching heat, and those who have come just recently are equally loved and treated generously by God. Homecoming is a good metaphor for generational transitions. We shouldn't be afraid of those. There is place for all of us in God's kingdom and in God's church. Those who have, who have come first have been last ones and vice versa. Just think about the stories your parents and grandparents have shared about what it was like to be a Christian of Lutheran tradition in the foothills of North Carolina <coughs> after the Revolutionary War in 1776. There is place. I am blessed and biased because in our culture, coming from Hispanic culture, which my heritage it is just Native American Indigenous people from 
Mexico and the Spaniards from those who came to our land back in the 1400s that um, God has been through all these years with people like you and like me. We like just to close these um, remarks in this sermon, you know, by saying that um, God is faithful. God has called you to continue being the light in this community that you have been through all these years. But be careful, because this parable teaches us that those fierce workers in the parable could become envious. This is an idiomatic expression. The real Greek um, text really doesn't say that. It says an idiomatic expression, a metaphor in Greek, it says your eyes are wicked. Your eye is wicked. Wicked. Evil. Which it is a metaphor for being envious. And human nature sometimes moves in that direction. I remember when I closed my remark with uh, when my wife and I came to our from the Catholic tradition to in a small village in central Mexico to a uh, Baptist congregation that gave us the first Bible that we ever owned. You know, Catholic Church were great and we treasure everything we learn about uh, the values. And then, but the Baptist gave us a Bible and they have a vibrant youth ministry in that community. So all youths in our community were attracted to come and be among people of our age. Um, and I remember one of the uh, founder, founding members of this congregation, Baptist tradition in our small community, who endured really persecution and endured mistreatment in our community because they were the Protestants in a small village in central Mexico, which was quite uh, unusual. They endured a lot of it, uh, really. So when we came, and my wife and I, you know, being teenagers, and I expressed uh, after high school that I wanted to go to seminary, uh, I will never forget this good intention, elderly in our congregation could say, you're crazy. How in the world are you gonna think that God is calling you to be a pastor when I have been here, you know, all of these years and during mistreatment, you know, you're wrong. God couldn't be calling you. That's, that's not possible. If God is going to call somebody, it will be me or my children. <laughs> you are too new. You don't know what you're talking about. So I will never forget that, and I say, well, uh, I understood through the years, and I still, you know, um, kind of what he was trying to say, it's not that easy, I should think. I never thought it was easy, I <laughs> just didn't know what it was, you know, but he wanted just to probably save me some hard, difficult time. Maybe he was for intention, or just he was just envious. Or he just wanted, he didn't want it to respond if God was calling him or his children to become pastors. So be careful. Parables you know, are great. Gospels are good in the scenario great. But I always, you always ask the question to my preaching professor in seminary. Yes, I did my Luther and Cheer in the Southern Seminary too, so I'm coming from there. <laughs> and I say, well, I say, um, the gospel of preaching always has to be good news. And I say, all depends for whom. <laughs> all depends for whom. All depends where are we in our relationship with God and how are we responding to God's call. The good news for us could be not so much good news for somebody else. So the good news for us today, homecoming, the celebration of life, the celebration of God's faithfulness. Celebrate, share memories, and continue doing everything you do for the sake of the gospel and the people of God. God bless you. Stand as you are able for the hymn of the day, number 765, Lord of all hope.
made us his people through our baptism of Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 105 in the Bible. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Amen. Now trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. gracious and merciful. Teach your church to invite and welcome all. Lead us to be grateful for the blessing of community. Challenge your church to choose equity and compassion over judgment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. God who sends the wind and the sun, you know every worm and bush by name. Help us remember that even the humble spark of creation are precious to you. Show us how best to care for the earth and its creature. Merciful God, receive our prayers. prayers. God who is ready to relent from punishing, impart your compassionate wisdom to legislators, judges, members of the military, and law enforcement. Give them courage to serve their communities in times of uncertainty, stress, or exhaustion. Merciful God, receive our prayers. God who saves, direct your people who are tempted by evil ways. Protect your children from calamity and disaster. Strengthen all who are incarcerated. Encourage all who are in despair or pain of any kind especially Beverly and Glenn, Tim, Ruby and Cliff, Wayne, Austin, Ann, Ruth and Floyd, Judy and Bobby, Rachel, Danny, Gail and Hoover, Tiffany, Stephen, Leonard, Hazel, Sarah, Brenda, William and Patsy, Jim, Jean and Jim, and all those who we now name before you with our lips and in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God, who is slow to anger, may we boast about the goodness of Jesus with the confidence of Paul in prison. Inspire us to find abundance in whatever vocation we are called to in the world and in service to our congregation. Merciful God, receive our prayer. prayer. God, who abounds in steadfast love, we give thanks for the saints called to the kingdom of heaven. United with them in spirit, hold us firm as we labor in this life and look for the life to come. 
merciful God, receive our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you. We invite you to share Christ's peace using American Sign Language or extending the hand of fellowship. <laughs> Thank you. 
Please stand as you are able for the offertory hymn, number 186, Create in Me a Clean Heart. blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we've gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks to you, God. God. Please be seated.
Please stand as you're able and let us pray. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Now, Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 536. God be with you till we meet again.
which is to grow in faith by seeking the will of God and sharing his love with all people. Now go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. But don't really.